Hello everyone, Fru here. Welcome to the presentation today. In today's presentation, we're going to look at Snowflake connecting to a Jupyter Notebook uh, for data science uh, use cases. In the presentation, I'm going to assume that you have Snowflake set up already and you are pretty familiar with Snowflake. Now, Snowflake is a modern data warehouse solution for massive amounts of uh, data and storage. Uh, it uses a multi-cluster approach that separates uh, storage and compute. It's uh, highly uh, scalable and extremely performant. So you can uh, use, uh, uh, go to the website of Snowflake, get a trial account and follow along with the presentation. Uh, extremely easy to set up, uh, deliver as a service. So that should be pretty easy for us to do. Now, the second piece is uh, setting up a Jupyter Notebook, which we're going to do. And we're going to use the hosted version of a Jupyter Notebook. And then we're going to go right into uh, connecting our Jupyter Notebook to Snowflake and then having some discussions around. Now, if you're not familiar with what a notebook is, uh, there are lots of notebooks out there in the market. Uh, Jupyter is just one of them. It's a rich ecosystem. Uh, it's very common and very popular in the data science space. A lot of people who do data science uh, like uh, Jupyter Notebook. They can run your models and uh, keep documentation along with the code uh, together as well as the results from from there. So what we're going to do is I have some data in Snowflake. We're going to see how we can use the Snowflake uh, Jupyter Notebook or Python connector, uh, get some data into Jupyter Notebook, do our processing. And then at the end, you can write that data back into Snowflake. So pretty uh, straightforward to do. Uh, this is my Snowflake account, which I'm going to connect into or I'm connected into. Let me switch my, my rows here. Just make sure I'm account admin uh, for the sake of the demonstration. And uh, we do have a sample data in here that comes with every Snowflake account. Once you set it up, uh, there is some customer data. There is some line items data. Uh, let me move this to the right. And uh, lots of other different data sets. And we're going to be using specifically the lines item data. So this is what we're going to bring into Jupyter Notebook to do some analysis. The goal here isn't to focus too much on the data. Uh, more so, we're going to be focusing on the connection side of things and just seeing how easy it is for us uh, to do that. So going into Jupyter Notebook, so we're going to be looking at number two here, setting up Jupyter Notebook, assuming you have Snowflake already. Uh, what we're going to see here, just Google Jupyter Notebook. It's a, it's a very popular project. There are lots of variations, like I mentioned, uh, Zeppelin and, and Zippel and um, and different companies have uh, versions of Jup of notebooks. Jupyter is just one of them. So just search for it and you can install it locally if you want, uh, deploy that on your enterprise or your own server. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to try live in the browser. So just click on try, uh, just uh, really easy for a demonstration or if you're just trying to learn, uh, the try makes it really easy for, for us to follow. Now, uh, in here, there are different uh, versions of it. Of course, I'm going to focus on the Jupyter side of things. Or I could use a classic notebook, which came from the IPython. IPython was the original version of this, I think, back in 2014. And then it got rebranded to Jupyter, or at least uh, a version of it uh, came up as uh, Jupyter. So let's use the Jupyter Lab. So uh, this will provide an environment for us, uh, ready-made uh, for us to use and do uh, and, and connect to Snowflake so I don't have to go uh, bother installing this on my uh, local machine or in the Docker or somewhere. Uh, just uh, a really easy uh, thing for us to do. Now, it's come up here pretty quick. And this is just a, a, a I think I just look at this as a throwaway account. I'm not going to put anything sensitive, anything serious in here. But if you're just learning, this is a quick and easy way uh, for us to do that. So once we have our Jupyter Notebook here, uh, you can get a notebook or you can get a console or some other things. I'm going to focus on the notebook side of things and voila, it gives me a quick, easy notebook uh, for me to use. You can go ahead and rename the notebook if you want. Uh, and I'm just going to call it uh, Tech with Fru uh, Demo uh, Snowflake. So that's what we're going to use the notebook for. Now we have a notebook uh, ready for us to use. And this is not uh, any different than a typical notebook you experience whether you're using Google Colab or you're using any one of the other notebooks here, Kaggle Notebook or um, uh, which one is popular, Zeppelin or Spark Notebooks or Saturn Notebooks, a lot of them are out there. 
So very similar to, to those in experience. Uh, the very first thing that we do is we're going to import, uh, we're going to import the library that we need uh, to connect to Snowflake. And that library we need, and you can type or follow this, is pip install uh, uh, Snowflake connector Python. So very standard. I do this all the time. And let's go ahead and run that. And it's going to go download the necessary libraries that we need. And it's going to install it into this environment. So this is uh, usually the very first thing uh, we do uh, when connecting to or when trying to connect to Snowflake uh, environment. Now, once you have that, I'm just going to go ahead and import a couple of other basic things here that we're going to need. So just a few models. We need a, a pandas, a numpy, and matplotlib so we can visualize some data sets at the very end. Nothing too complicated at this point. So let's go ahead and uh, execute that. Uh, it should be all good and uh, successful. And I'm going to do a little module here to get my password to authenticate into Snowflake. And uh, the next uh, script here is just going to import get pass that allows me to get the password in the prompt, put that in the variable password, which I can use later on. So let's run that. It's going to ask for my password. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my very secure password. And that's going to show up in the, the variable, which we can use at the later point. So nope, I don't want to save that. Now, that's pretty good. I think we're doing really good at this point. Uh, the next thing here, let's go and connect to my Snowflake environment, which is uh, this environment that we have. I'm going to use this uh, account. And uh, it's an AWS uh, West, and my user is going to be Tech with Fru. And basically, we're going to use the password that we just uh, saved in here from above. Uh, the only reason why I did this was I don't want to hand code the password in here for the entire world to see. That wouldn't be secure. That wouldn't be a good day. So let's uh, run that. And uh, in a few seconds, we, if everything goes well, we connect to Snowflake. And that should be pretty uh, good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run a query in here. And this query is going to select star from my uh, sample data, TP, uh, TPCH uh, table, line items, and I'm just going to get the top uh, 10,000 records. So just basic uh, stuff. Let's actually take that query, uh, see what it looks like on my Snowflake account. And uh, this is the record set, but I just want to make sure that it runs here and you can see exactly uh, that query. So pretty uh, basic stuff, a couple of columns that we need uh, for data science uh, use case. So going back here, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just put that query into a variable and we're going to use that at a later point. So now uh, two things we're going to do here pretty quick. Uh, the very first one is we're going to just uh, create a cursor and just execute that query against Snowflake and fetch that data and put it in uh, something that we can iterate over. All right, so we're getting the data from Snowflake now, and we're putting that into uh, the result set uh, over there. And once we have that result set, this is where the magic of uh, a notebook really comes into play. So at this point, uh, we're just going to uh, get some info, some basic info around it to see uh, what data we've brought back. All right, and it should show some results. It's described the table. We see the data type. Uh, we see the number of uh, records in there. Uh, and then uh, not null uh, columns. So again, pretty uh, basic, nothing to fancy. And that's the amount of memory is used uh, for us. So let's actually do some counts, right? Again, this the goal for this exercise is not to uh, show you how good I am with uh, uh, data science types of work. I'm sure you guys, if you're watching this and you are data science inclined, you can do better things with this. but. You have the data at your hands, and now you can really, really get creative with this. So here, I'm just going to get the data uh, grouped by sheep mode and then do a count of it. So if you realize my data set, let's move it this way. My data set did have um, this uh, column or this attribute, you might say, called uh, sheep mode. And the sheep mode is just basically by LAN, LC, or mail. And so we're just trying to figure out by the items we're selling, 
one method of shipping are we using the most? So that's a very simple ABC type of stuff. Uh, I think anybody can figure that out pretty quick. Not anything to write home about. So uh, that's good. Uh, we can see some results. And if you really want to continue, you can go ahead and check other nulls in my data set. I don't think so. No nulls, a uh, pretty clean data set. And you can really, really get more creative bringing all the data frame uh, functions that you know at this point uh, of the data that we brought from Snowflake. I think this is now um, something that you can really comfortably do uh, as a data scientist at this point. Now, before we go, one last thing is let's do a little bit of visualization. At the beginning, what we did was we did bring in this uh, matplotlib library. And typically, you use that for visualization. If I was going to create a really nice notebook and share this with somebody, I, I probably want to put in a few charts and graphs. So people don't usually like looking at numbers and rows and columns. They want to see graphs, right? So let's get our ship mode and put that in the total, what we counted, and then we're just going to plot that as a bar chart, okay? So something really basic uh, that most people can uh, do pretty quickly. And so voila, we have a result, which again, not the most interesting or insightful query we can do uh, or exercise we can do, but you get the point. Now we can see the, the shipping uh, mode and uh, account of how many items were shipped by that mode. And clearly mail seems to be the top and rail is kind of nowhere to be found. But uh, there you go, you get the point. Um, what we've seen here, uh, you can really continue and get more creative. And at the end, you, if you want, you can write the results back once you've done your machine learning or your data science back into Snowflake and uh, uh, close the, the loop on that. So Snowflake, the highly performant uh, modern data warehouse with massive scalable compute and storage, uh, allowing you to amass all your data in one place. And then you can connect with periphery tools like uh, your notebooks, interact with that data, do your machine learning and transformations, data engineering, data cleansing. And once you're done, you can write the results back into Snowflake. Extremely powerful and extremely flexible. So guys, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, just to do a quick recap here, we've seen how to connect to Snowflake, which I assume you already have background about it if you're watching the video. Uh, also, we've seen Jupyter Notebook, a uh, quick and easy way to get uh, a free uh, Jupyter Notebook. You don't really have to install this if you don't have, to, if you don't want to. You can use the free version, and you can connect both uh, your Jupyter to Snowflake with a simple command, which we saw at the very beginning, uh, doing the pip install, and uh, Jupyter Notebook can connect to Snowflake. You authenticate that with your user, and once you have that, uh, you can be off and running doing uh, some really interesting uh, data science uh, use case. All right. Hopefully this was helpful. Just to bring this back home, this was through. Uh, thanks for watching and seeing our presentation to the end. Uh, if you found value out of this, please make sure you like the video, subscribe, share this with somebody uh, that might get value out of this. Again, you've been awesome. I've been through. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next presentation.